right, I'm so glad you are all here at Westover Kids at Home, where we're having the best block party the world has ever seen. I think this party has really grown on our friendship. Remember, friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. Since we're all such good friends, let's kick things off with a game time. This game is called Block Freeze Dance Party. You guys will be listening to some music, but whenever that music stops, you have to stop too. Are you ready? Let's start. This was so fun, but the party doesn't stop now. Let's stay on our feet and get ready to sing and worship God. Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful, because I never had a friend like you. Help me to be who you've been to me, to everyone I see. Let us love one another. You with me in the darkest valley, you with me on the mountain top. I'm thankful that you never leave me and that your love will never stop. Help me to be who you've been to me, to everyone I see. Let us love one another. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John. Chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Peter hauled in the knotted net yet again as the first light of dawn gleamed in the eastern sky. Empty. Not a single fish all night. Thomas shook his head. Uh, I doubt we'll catch a thing before it's time to take the boat in. John studied Peter thoughtfully. Peter, you didn't really want to catch fish anyway, did you? You just wanted to get out in the boat and do something normal. Peter shrugged, but he knew John was right. Over the past few weeks and months, everything in his life had turned upside down. First, Peter had shown the courage to speak the truth about his friend Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Many people wanted to make Jesus king, even though the religious leaders hated him. The day before Jesus was killed, Peter had promised Jesus that he would follow him anywhere and even give up his life for Jesus. But that very evening, 
Jesus was arrested. Peter was so scared he told three different people he wasn't Jesus' friend. I don't know that man. Peter felt sick about what he'd done, especially when Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. But then he returned to life. He appeared to his friends. It was amazing, incredible. Everyone was excited beyond belief. Except Peter must have wondered. Is Jesus mad at me? Am I still his friend? Does he still love me? Now Peter found himself in the boat, trying to figure it all out. His fingers tightened on the wet rope as he prepared to cast a net one more time. As he glanced over on the shoreline, he saw a figure standing there. Friends, don't you have any fish? Nope, not one. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. The seven disciples in the boat exchanged glances as Thomas laughed. I seriously doubt it. You guys have anything better to do? Let's give it a try. Together, the men heaved the heavy wet net back into the sea on the other side. Hey, I think we've got something. Bring it on in. There's one fish. Two fish. A red fish. A blue fish. And another one. And another uh, 10. Whoa, need some help here. The net was so full of fish, they couldn't haul it into the boat. They began towing it to shore. John gaped at the man still standing on the beach. It's the Lord. Excitement raced through Peter's veins. He was about to see Jesus again. But just as quickly, guilt gnawed at his stomach. Facing Jesus meant he had to face how he denied knowing Jesus. But it's Jesus. I've got to see him no matter what. Grabbing his coat, Peter jumped out of the boat and into the water. He half ran and half waded to the beach when he discovered that Jesus started a small bonfire. Fish and bread were already toasting over the flames. He's got some and he's making breakfast for us. Jesus smiled at Peter. Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Uh, yes, Lord. Peter ran back to the lapping water to help his friends haul their fish to shore. 153. You counted? Don't doubt it. Jesus gestured to the disciples to join him around the fire. Come and have breakfast. As the disciples gathered, Jesus offered them bread to eat. John whispered to Peter. This is what he did when we last ate together at the Passover meal. When breakfast finished, the disciples rose to take care of their fish. Peter found himself walking beside Jesus. There were so many things he wanted to say, but he couldn't find the words. Simon Peter, do you really love me more than these others do? Peter swallowed hard. Surely Jesus knew what he felt. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter remembered how Jesus would compare people to sheep in his stories. Peter, do you really love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. Sheep? People. Peter waited in his mind. Jesus must be telling Peter to take care of the people who had followed him. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Just as Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, he now confirmed three times that he loved Jesus. What's more, Jesus wanted Peter to go out and share that love with others. He's forgiven me, even after what I did. Peter, things are going to get even more difficult for you. You are going to be led places you do not want to go. Peter slowly nodded his head. He was willing to do anything Jesus asked of him. Follow me. Yes, Lord, I will. Because Jesus had forgiven him, Peter was now free to share the love of God with those around him without carrying around a heavy load of guilt. Wow, this story just proves that Jesus was a fantastic friend. He didn't make Peter feel bad about what he had done. Instead, Jesus told Peter he loved him and that he had done big things for Peter in the future. Jesus showed us something important that we need to learn for each other. He showed us how to forgive. Remember, friends forgive one another. Jesus definitely was the expert on forgiveness. When he died on the cross, he paid the price for our sins, the things we've done wrong, because he did that for us. We can ask God to forgive our sins and we know for sure that he'll do it. The truth is, we'll have lots of opportunities to forgive our friends. Our friends will have so many opportunities to forgive us and any good friendship needs to forgive. Maybe you're really excited about going to see a movie with one of your best friends and then you find out they went to see it with somebody else. Or maybe a friend was playing a little too rough on the playground and they made you trip and fall down. It would be easy to be mad at your friends when things like that happen. 
but it's important for us to learn to forgive. You can forgive someone if they don't ask you to. Instead of holding it against them, you can just decide to let it go. And remember, you need to be wise about forgiveness. Just because you forgave someone doesn't mean that you have to keep hanging out with them or if they keep hurting you. It's important to spend your time with friends who treat you right and help you stay on track too. Forgiveness is a great way to treat others the way you want to be treated. After all, if you mess up, don't you want your friends to forgive you too? Well, thanks guys for tuning in. Now let's just go dance and party. Woo! Watch the darkness slip away Put your power on display Say goodbye to fear and shame